Welcome back, Dwellerverse. Uh, we are a bit of a shambles today. I will be hosting the podcast in uh, Nick's absence and Jabe here today as the talent. So welcome back to the Dwellers Below. It's been a hot minute or a cold minute, depending on which part of the world you're in. And today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic. All of the commenters have been clamoring for it. The most self-indulgent episode we've ever had. I need to pick a new army, and I've got three friends here to help me out with that. So uh, let's let's go around the crew uh, and find out where we're at. Uh, on my top right-hand corner, the Jaber Slice. How are we doing, mate? Hobby, hobby beers. Yeah, I think he means hobby beers. Yeah. So I've been. Um, I haven't. All I've done since last episode, I think, or since the slow grow is I've painted four more boar, but then I've done so much other hobby prep stuff, most of it buying. I bought, like, a whole bunch of the Army Painter Fanatic um, war paints. Um, haven't tested any yet. And then I was like, oh, man, my table's a fucking mess. I need to clean this up. And so I bought a whole bunch of Hobby Zone, um, like those modular things that, like, magnet together and stuff. And then it took me about... Oh, I don't know, like an hour and a half per module to actually create, like cutting them off and then like PVAing them together and that stuff. Hands are bloody killing me. But now I've got a sweet hobby set up. It's all good. And then tonight I just, I magnetize the tops of the boar riders um, so then I can just kind of click them in. Um, so then I, uh, I don't know, it's just better than trying to rank them up when you can't kind of twist them a little bit. Um, Sounds very so, uh, boring. Oh, 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 that was a good uh, one. Damn it. Where's yeah. my list of puns? I made it's like one a triple layer to that as well. Because when you're drilling into the models, that's like boring a hole. Yeah. just The best so jokes are ones you have to explain. I mean, they're really the best ones, aren't they? If, if it wasn't for explaining bad puns, I'm not sure that we'd have any longevity as a podcast. But uh, Dave of War, how have you been? Yeah, good. Playing a fair bit. Been, been getting excited about wood elves and ogres now. I think I've... I've been enjoying my Empire games, but I've, I've played quite a lot with the three usable units in the army and <laughs> am sort of ready to start playing around with some dirty Wood Elf shenanigans. So hearing I've got a tournament uh, later this month where I, I'm running a, a Wood Elf Dragon at, at 1250 points. Uh, Ooh, so tasty. that'll be pretty fun. Just, you know, disgusting. Lots of, lots of archers running away. Dragon, eagle, that's it. Mm -hmm. Can't get we any points off it unless you kill a dragon. So yeah. I'm 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 loving loving the old world. Looking forward to getting the filth back out. Yeah, we've got a tournament coming up where dragons aren't allowed. So luckily, uh, the wyvern in a world without dragons, the wyvern becomes the dragon. Uh, is my plan. And uh, speaking of ogres, Lucky, how are we doing? Hey, good. Uh, thanks for having me back. Um, I've been done, I've been doing a lot of hobby recently. My my hobby was actually getting married. Uh, a couple of months ago so but i am back now um i did last night build this uh ogre stonehorn so um you know i've been thinking a lot about uh you know writing ogre lists i think i've had one game a couple of months ago just before the wedding with with danny paints uh hashtag who is not on here tonight but um i've actually you know just been thinking you know I, i'm really jealous of you guys sounds like there's a lot of tournaments going on in uh in the uk um and i think there are tournaments going around in different parts of australia but there hasn't been anything uh at least that i've seen in melbourne so i, I actually um, i think i need an event even just like a one day out to like you know give me um some insensitive just to, to start like you know painting a bit more um and getting a couple of practice games in so um Anyway, that's a challenge to any TOs out there in Melbourne. Uh, Show us what you, know, you got. You know what, Lockie? Uh, you mm. could be the TO that, you, that uh, Gotham needs. But then I wouldn't be able to play, Chris. Uh, multitasking. I, I hear it's a thing. <laughs> it it so. is amazing being in the UK, though, because like, this is the third tournament in Sheffield since the old world dropped. And I think just about every weekend there's another tournament with like an hour or two train ride of me uh so mm. there is just lots of options it's pretty it's a pretty good spot for it yeah things are just starting to heat up in scotland as well uh there's like one a month in aberdeen which is three mm. hours away but i did manage to do the round trip for that in a day 
three hour train there yeah, play three games three hours back a uh, bit shattered by the end of it but you know warhammer is just that much of a you know it's a lifestyle uh so yeah lots going on lots to look forward to are you guys so, playing one one days or two like how, what's the what's the format generally here it's been one days mostly and, and mostly slightly lower points so quite a lot of 1500 some 1750 some 2 1250 there have been some two days but less of them um and to be honest at the moment just with me with a you know one-year-old kid mm. i can't really pull a two-dayer unless it's something i'm planning quite a long long way in advance um yeah no. and whilst i don't have a child i am extremely weak so one days are also <laughs> preferable for me uh yeah. Are, are they squeezing in four games at, the, at those lower points levels or still just the three? Mostly three so far, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. No, that's what are you fair. finding a 2,000-point game takes? Three hours for me. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. I I think the time will drop still, but just the, yeah. the amount of time it takes to execute all of the – like the – not, not super grindy, but kind of iterative or recurring combats. Uh, yeah, games just take quite a long time to play out, even once the rules are kind of down. So I wouldn't imagine anything less than two and a half hours for a tournament round time. And, and even that would be pushing it. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I've been playing quite a few games, but they've all been with Orcs and Goblins. I've also been doing a lot of painting and it's all been painting orcs and goblins. So I'm ready for something new. There's eight other armies out there that are legal to play in tournaments. And today we're going to discuss some of, I guess, the possibilities for what what I might do next. Uh, I said this is really self-indulgent, uh, but we're hopefully going to go beyond narrowly talking about which dragon build is best suitable for me and my dragon shenanigan ways. Um, <laughs> So that's going to be more of a framing device. We'll start out, we'll start the conversation there, but hopefully cover lots of different uh, armies, model ranges, ideas that might get people's creative juices flowing so that uh, other people out there in internet land can, uh, can lap up our creative juices. Sounds a plan. So you're bored with the orcs and goblins already. That's what, that's what I took from that. I, I wouldn't say bored. There's still quite a few things that I haven't I haven't even tried yet. Like the troll hag, I think is really good and fun, yeah. and I uh, haven't done that. There's you know all of the different armies coming out in the arcane journal. Even just in the core book, there's still loads of units I haven't got. But it it just feels like there's so many other things to try. And even with all of those different changes to the orcs and goblins, it's still going to have a for the most part a kind of similar play style. And it's still going to be painting more green. So I wouldn't say bored, but definitely looking to experience more of the delights that the old world has to offer. So uh, one of these six armies that have got dragons is, is what I'm hearing, a more dragony type uh, army. So, so that, that's always been my MO in the past. I love dragons. I like, I like playing with big flying monsters, but I also like being a bit of a hipster. So I would do that when dragons weren't the thing that was good mm. uh, and i had a lot of fun trying to prove people wrong but now people realize that dragons are really good so i can't yeah. be a hipster and play a dragon so yeah i guess that's one of the things to look for is something that suits my sort of play style like what i want to do with an army but also has a you know something a bit different that's not just going to be copying you know whichever tournament list one last week so, so let's, yeah let's i guess start with that bit yeah start with that what, what sort of play style do you do you like what do you what do you so, want to do I, i've been having a bit of a think about that and i really like armies that have the initiative and get to sort of dictate the terms of engagement and usually i do that by running at people really quickly with a dragon or with flying saurus old bloods or collect sun eater just like really big angry fast hitting armies but i've also kind of enjoyed armies that go full dave wood elf avoidance and control the terms of engagement just by being super mobile and able to avoid and shoot I, it's those kind of middle ground armies that clunk into the middle of the board and 
can't usually decide how things pan out and have to sort of react doesn't suit me as much. And in some so, ways, I've been so running the orcs are a bit like that. The phase you um, need most in then is movement. So you want high movement or high movement potential armies, which means not dwarves, not, not dwarves, chaos yeah. dwarves, not humans unless you knight them. So Bretts could work, but Empire, unless you do a demigriff and knights thing, maybe not, and probably not orcs. You can take a lot of characters riding griffins in an Empire army. You can, except for the you realize that the characters writing them are still Empire characters. Yeah, true. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so I, I think that's roughly right. I I did like the idea of a dwarf army where everyone's got Vanguard, but of course, Vanguard means dwarfs only go three inches, so three it's inches not actually, up. doesn't actually oh, okay. achieve very much. Charging up the middle work for me. <laughs> Is there anything so about the... Oh, sorry, Jabe. Is there anything about the Orcs army that you have enjoyed playing in terms of the play style that you, you know, uh, might want to replicate or at least, you know, say, oh, I've got this army now. I want to, you know, uh, expand my collection through different tactics and different play styles. It will shock you to hear that the Wyvern is my favorite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I um, I've also been starting to use the Boar Boys a lot more. Uh, the cavalry has been quite fun and also mm. magic. It's obviously really good in the game, but it's not only powerful, it also feels good to have yeah. loads of magic. Sure. Uh, so it's like it's both good and fun. Uh, so those have probably been the elements of the Orc army I like the most, uh, even though throwing fanatics at people is probably the most powerful thing. So are so you more motivated by the gameplay than like painting it? Because, I mean... The orcs have also been good in that you've been able to smash them out with slap shop and they look quite good in, in like a really speedy way as opposed to nick cohen who i think is still doing trim on his first chaos model from three months ago yeah something about nicks and painting models 0.64 percent at a time um so i i think this is going to be more of a hobby project but there's enough different model ranges and conversion opportunities out there that I think pretty much any army will be able to be turned into a hobby project. Um, however, I, I am pretty motivated to paint red and blue. Uh, I've spent a lot of time painting green. And in the past, I, I've been notorious for painting yellow, purple, and turquoise. Uh, so I think red and blue are the colors that whatever army it's going to be uh, will be sort of featured reasonably heavily. Mm. Yeah. you've played a lot so, of armies in the past is there anything that you're like you know you, you don't want to paint up again or you don't want to play the same play style and you play something different like is there any exclusions there um i i have one exclusion well i, I guess technically two one for fluff reasons and one for mm. uh it's not a real army reasons <laughs> Uh, so I still still don't believe in Chaos Dwarves. Uh, you know, it's a ravening horde fan fiction list from fifth edition. Sorry, that's that's just uh, that's just the way it is. Even if Games Workshop are trying to retcon things and pretend that Chaos Dwarves were always there, uh, definitely not how how things have actually gone. And uh, I, I just find the Bretonian fluff really offensive. The way that they discuss peasants loving their masters and willing to live in squalor to uh elevate them up i i find that really distasteful so uh i, th I think for that you're reason okay with it's... like chaos and nurgle and beastman and stuff uh look i haven't read as much of the fluff of those i'm sure there they may there may be bad stuff in all of them uh but yeah just haven't got to it yet i i just have a yeah i, I got a re really strong distaste for the bretonian law uh as it is in the the current version of the rule book uh which is as yeah why i'm it would take a lot of Pegasus Knights to convince me to play Bretonians. Because I was going to say, the Peg Knights are like all the things you've described. They're insanely powerful. Multiple Pegasus or Hippogriff characters is really good. They, I mean, I don't know if any of you have played against multi-Peg Knight armies yet. They are atrocious. 360 degree line of sight with, with counter charge and movement 10 is just like, it's absolutely abominable. Yeah, my record right. against Bretonians is losing the game entirely 
pretty much to flying things. It's uh, yeah, it's fairly grim. And that doesn't had, you know, um... entice you to come back, you know, and play that. <laughs> it, it, it does. <laughs> However, uh, yeah, the pre the previously mentioned fluff concerns, but also mm. the fact that they were one of the two armies that dropped on release. Uh, is that there's just quite a lot of them around at the moment. And I, whilst I'd happily play something pretty common if I was doing mm. something different, I don't think that spamming Pegasus Knights would be particularly different or innovative or original. And they are the Sorry. second most played army after Chaos right now. Cool. So you want high movement with some shooting kind of avoidance potential, some flying shenaniganry, you like your monsters um dark elves you don't want to be playing what everyone else is playing but you like a powerful army well uh are dark elves powerful i guess would be an interesting question because I, well, I know some of the uh some of our uh, podcasting friends are less enamored about uh, about the, the old dark elves the dark elf dragon is powerful i think and you can have two of them the yeah. second dragon is also powerful yeah <laughs> Mm. It's a nice well, thing. You like to be the underdog. Oh, too, though, awesome. right? mm -hmm. Underdog. Yeah. So I was yes. I was really sad during the week. Someone put up, you know, a massive dark elf army for like three hundred bucks, um, like in decent condition, and I was like, oh, I was trying to jump on it, and then they must have taken it down within five minutes as they realised what what the hell they had done. <laughs> it <was> real sad. <laughs> I've got a dark elf army sitting in the cupboard that I'm, I probably do need you? to get rid of. I do. <laughs> do, you do? <laughs> right. yeah, don't you have the dark elf army, Lucky? Oh, I sold it, unfortunately, oh, no. when, I, when, when I thought the old world was never coming back. Like, I sold the rest of my things. Hey, you can found we, someone um, who liked uh, thin bases. Can we maybe go through the, the armies that exist? Um, I'll talk about the, the meta thing that's out there and then just talk sort of pro cons of each army and then see which aligns with your with your play style. So shout out to Wohammer, um, who are trying to build up some stats around um, old world um, armies um, through tournaments, etc. And there are statistical problems with it, and you can't you've got to take all of this with a pretty healthy grain of salt. But here's the tier list as of April. Um based on 2000 point events um, and all events that they've got gathered the data on um, since release. Uh, and so Beastmen Bray Herds come in as the highest win rate army with 58%, um, 73 games played. Then there's Warriors of Chaos, 165 games played, a fair bit more popular than the, the, on the old Beasties, also at 58%. Um, we get our Tomb Kings, uh, 152 games played, 56%. Then uh, High Elves at 53%, um, 91 games. Kingdom of Bretonia, 154. So that's up there. That's second highest number of games played uh, with 53%. Also 53% is uh, good old Orcs and Goblins with 136 games played. And then, um, so those are the top six armies. Okay, so Beasties, Warriors, Tomb Kings, High Elves, um, Bretts, and then Orcs. Then below that, we come in with 49% win rate with Vampire Counts, only 76 games clocked. Then Wood Elves, also at 49% with 107 games clocked. Then Ogre Kings, there's only 56 people wanting to play those, but they came in at a win rate of 47%. Followed by Lizardmen, also at 47% with 37 games played, which is the lowest of any of them. So Lizard Kings could be a good thing for an underdog. Uh, then also at 47%, Demons of Chaos, 55 games. Then Chaos Dwarves, uh, 49 games at 47%. Dwarves at 45%, 113 games played. So those guys um, take up the middle sort of band with plus minus 5% on a 50% um, win rate. And then coming in at the bottom three is the very powerful Dark Elves with 69 games played, which they'd be very proud to have been, knowing they're Dark Elves, those filthy bastards. Uh, and 44% win rate. 
Then Skaven only winning 41% with 54 games played. And then coming in last, the Empire of Man. 121 games played, pretty good, but only 36% win rate. Are you shocked about that one, That's... Dave? No, I'm, I'm happy that they're still one of the most played armies and that we have such consistent data on their performance. <laughs> yeah. And like all of that, obviously, massive grain of salt. Data um, set is relatively small at, at this point, and the people that are playing them, you know, people are learning, they're they're experimenting. There's no meta um, sort of builds beyond, you know, raw dragons, but people are still experimenting. They're probably playing the models that they've got, um, and they're probably more people playing with armies that there are models available. And so yeah. all of that um, taken into it. But, um, you know, it's a bit interesting. Empire yeah, Last also... Beasties up top. There's also other kind of complicating factors as well where, uh, for example, with vampire counts, I think there are some really powerful armies built around screaming things to death. But mm. a lot of people playing vampires might not be doing that. And yeah. so you might have one of the most powerful lists in the game from an army that only has a, a lower win, win rate if the other, you know, the kind of more normal builds that people play do suffer a bit uh, in the meta as a whole. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Lots to unpack with all of the things like win rates and statistics, but a helpful guideline about where things kind of sit in the overall, well, I guess win rate, but also popularity. Mm. Because yeah, I need to feel clever and special by having an army that other people aren't, you know, not always playing mirror matches, which uh, would be a bit of a worry with the old warriors and Britonians uh, at the moment. Doing things. Team Kings. All right, so do you want to then let's go through the armies and then figure mm -hmm. out um, sort of pros, cons, what the army's all about, how they are to collect in terms of models and all that kind of jazz. And we'll just start from the bottom, I suppose, <laughs> Empire. So what are, what are Empire about? Davey, you've been playing them. I mean, what Empire about in terms of the, the list that works is cavalry and archers for core, possibly war machines, demigriffs and a steam tank. The griffins that they can use are all right, but they took a big debuff recently with the FAQ, meaning that the laurels of victory doesn't work on their mounts attacks. There's a few more fun things you can do with characters on Demigriff, but basically the strong lists are cavalry, all pretty much all cavalry lists that use a bit of artillery to back them up. Um, and the, the problem is that they're not as good at that as other armies are, pretty much. Um, so they are mobile. They are pretty fun to play. Like you've got a lot of agency, you're moving pretty quick, you're quite durable. Those sorts of things are, are good, but the damage output doesn't really, but they just don't do any specific thing better than other people. How are they to collect? They're very good in that there's lots of ultimate manufacturers who make kind of late German Renaissance style models that, that fit the criteria. Um, you can't really buy anything from GW right now that, suits them but you can get lots of third party stuff they they're quite time consuming to paint i think compared to some armies because you need a fair whack of them and they're fairly a lot like intricate models but then they're not too bad i think that you can still get plenty of stuff out there there that'd are be, that'd be Go pretty low in. like lower model count though right if they're playing full like demigriff and knights and cannons army would or is or, or do you need still a block or two of infantry no, you absolutely don't need, and you shouldn't take any infantry, yeah. pretty much. I, I mean, it, they're not, you, it's it's relatively low model count, but like, mm. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I find painting knights a lot more time consuming than I do painting a bunch of infantry, just in ter terms of surface area and stuff. So if you've got a good paint scheme where you're, you know, Danny painting it, using oils and base coats and smashing them out that way, I think they'd be pretty quick. But if you're having to hand detail bunch of knights they're, they're fairly time consuming because the knights are quite cheap which is the the upside of them um but they're they're not too bad in terms of model count uh overall they're not ogres but they're they're not too bad there always does seem to be a lot of empire on the bss as well um just people just flogging them off fairly you know at reasonable prices so i don't know what it's like in the uk they're the most popular army in war in mm -hmm. total war uh, like in, in, they? they're, they're the army that people play the most. I think they're quite iconic. So lots of people do have mm -hmm. empire armies. Um, but if you're wanting to play tournaments, Chris, I, I 
I wouldn't do them, not because I don't think they can play at tournaments. I think it's just you've got like one to two builds that can, and there's no diversity in the list beyond that. Okay. Yeah, there's also the additional upside of borrowing some of Games Workshop's other models for them. So I know the Cities of Sigma range doesn't match up perfectly, but there are some incredible characters and yeah. like centerpiece kind of things out of the the new Cities of Sigma uh, models that would fit into an Empire army, even if you know, you're not going to be able to fully you know do the whole army with that. But some of those like witch hunters and mercenary generals yeah. and things look incredible. In terms of um, hobby, I reckon, I reckon that would be appealing to me if I wanted to do an army for love. Um, you know, there's something about humans and uh, the diversity of stuff that you can you can get, but it sounds like in terms of the power, in terms of playing it, there's not much diversity in terms of being able to enjoy yourself by smashing other people's faces in. Um, so maybe they're not for you, Chris. There's also just the, I guess, a perennial question as well, which is whether there's any agency that the army has in the face of things like a dragon or four or five wailing dirges as to whether, uh, it, not so much just that I wouldn't be able to stomp on people, but how much of a response you can sort of build into some of the other lists that are out there. Um, so I know with the orcs and goblins, a dragon is still a headache and I've lost more than I've beaten the big dragons but the games are competitive. There's a lot of play to them. Uh, and I, I, Dave, you would know whether or not Empire have that sort of, whether they've got that sort of counterplay in them. Yeah, I think they do actually. The, the, I think the Wailing Dirge is awful. I think the Wailing Dirge vampire list, you don't. You, you've got too few wounds and you're entirely relying on two of armor saves to keep your army alive. Um, but the, the dragons you do, you, you've got access to really cheap level fours who can take illusion magic and they can block out the dragons to quite a large extent and the steam tank is toughness seven ten wounds unbreakable with a three up armor save and so the dragon won't lose to a steam tank but it will take a while to get through and in that time your your demigriffs can kind of go out i've only played a couple of games against dragons but i've won all of them the the, the, the with the empire that's the dragons haven't been the thing that's been as brutal um as as other stuff yeah mm -hmm. So what about, um, do you want to move on to so in the interest of getting through this long list of stuff? Um, Skaven, with only 54 games played, 41% win rate. What do we think of Skaven? That was an orc. <laughs> that, that, silence. That, Clearly that, not, silence not thinking lot. much. Um, do you like painting hundreds of guys? And also, um, and it would like, be good to think about this question for um, other armies, but, you know, like what has been affected? Uh, I know that Skaven has uh, in a lot of the erratas or like the, the um, get, you know, getting rid of the uh, AOS armies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know I don't like the idea of having mm. just loads and loads of clan rats and then mm. shooting into combat or whatever it is that Skaven like, used to be able to do, which they can't actually do anymore. Do so the, yeah. the low win rate doesn't really shock me. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing I do like about the Skaven army and kind of always have is the gutter runners and the, the assassins, which I did notice they nerfed the master assassin for Skaven for some reason in the last FAQ, uh, because apparently that was just mm. powerful. So uh, that, that's probably the angle of Skaven that I like the idea of the most. Loads of throwing weapons and slings, ambushing and skirmishing and avoiding combat and being extremely annoying what are their monsters like you know can you run like a couple of abominations or you know uh some of those other bigger models that they have you, you can run two hell pits they're, they're 210 points and one per thousand so you, you can run two of them mm. they're still pretty good you know like they they don't hit as hard as they used to and they're currently like toughness five with a five up regen so they're not that difficult to get through um mm. in a way that they, they used to be you know six wounds does go down pretty quick but they've got a good number of stomp attacks they're pretty you know aggressive in terms of the, the damage output i it's i, I think this gave it a really cool i'm just i just don't not convinced they do the things that you want chris like mm -hmm. i think you if you're playing skaven and you're not running a few big blocks of infantry for holding stuff up then i mean i think actually people have been running giant rats in really large numbers because they're three mm -hmm. points 
three points a model for a giant rat, which is movement six. Um, and so you can run, you know, like absolutely gigantuan units, like 30, 30 model units of giant rats costs you 90 points. Mm. Do, do they get rank bonuses? They're closed order. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, and then, oh, honestly, and then, that's maybe the most interesting thing. They're horde as well, so you get the extra rank bonus. Um, and they fight in an extra rank, so you get to fight from a second rank. Um, and they're warband, so you get the leadership. So they, I don't know. I think they've got... Um, the giant rats, I think, is actually one of the things in the list that's that's pretty good, but they're incredibly cheap. You know, you're, you're going to be painting at least 90 of them. Um, but but also uh, literal rat models will be potentially quite a quick one to do with some dry brushes yeah. and washes. Leave the uh, leave the time and love for the <laughs> handcrafted, customized doom wheels and screaming bells and things that uh, you know the big centerpiece models. Uh, you know, which I I really like this that the shittest thing is the best, and so you're going to see an army of Skaven with like lots and lots of little rats, and then lesser of the big ones, and then lesser and lesser of the big ones, and then hopefully not just all of the big toys. I really mm -hmm. like that as a sort of a theme. And I wish that they did that for kind of all of the armies, like the best unit in empire should be just, you know, standard men at arms type things, just like your line guys. And if they make them really attractive, then you don't just see armies with all of the toys and it feels great. And when someone does take a Griffin or, or, or a Demi Griff, it's kind of, it's cool that they're taking them, but it's not broke. Giant rats for me, that's, that blows my mind that they're kind of like the best unit in Skaven. That's amazing. I, I, my guess is that that's a mistake or, or an unintentional thing where uh, they were people were not envisaging having like three units of 30 giant rats as movement six combat res blocks running around. Uh, that seems like something that was maybe overlooked when they traditionally been much more of a diversion uh, small unit. But movement six big blocks is actually really good yeah um that, that's maybe the the most inter intriguing thing that i've heard about from or from skaven um especially i don't quite know how the dragged along rule works for your screaming bells and your plague furnaces it, it does work that they move along Can at the same speed of your unit dragging along yeah Ooh. Ooh. now we're talking are they on 20s or 25s i think they're on 25s, 25s. i don't think anything's on yeah. 20s left yeah, okay mm -hmm. Can you run some small, the, some small units of them as well, like in, in marching formation, to go and just block block the block shit up? It, dep it would depend on people's comp, but I mean, if you were if people were allowing you to take more than three units of the same mm. troop, then yeah, I mean, I'm sure you could like thirty points for ten of them, mm, and that's just nothing. pop them in marching column. <laughs> you know, three wide. That's that's eighteen inches is a lot of space to move. Mm. Yeah, so I, th that's potentially another problem where you might have an army that's mobile and puts a lot of pressure on with all these movement six things, but then a lot of tournaments are saying, well, you can only take three three copies of the same unit, yeah. which would just instantly, uh, yeah, uh, that would just cut the legs out from underneath a list with, with admittedly like 120 giant rats, maybe not the most interesting of things, but kind of a cool way to play an army that otherwise maybe is struggling a bit how's the um magic and the collectability there's going to be loads of models it's when they get re-released for age of sigma but beyond I mean, that they, i'm not exactly sure but the the i mean the magic is awesome like a gray seer has access to i think it's like battle magic demonology illusion dark magic elementalism like it has one of the biggest ranges of of laws i don't think it gets um high magic and like one other or something so it has really good range of range of magic and it gets warp stone tokens to add to the castings so they're actually quite good with magic i think it's the problem is that the army doesn't have great responses to dragons and doesn't have really aggressive combat units that mop stuff up um and so you're sort of struggling a little bit there i mean people have been running the screaming bell with the fell blade and illusion magic um 
<laughs> because that like the the because the illusion magic um what do you call it uh, spectral, spectral doppelganger. doppelganger yeah so the the, the fell blade is is plus three strength d3 wounds no saves of any kind allowed whoa it's 100 points and it it, it it hurts you when you roll a one to hit um so you have to put it on a screaming bell otherwise you kill yourself but on a screaming bell when it gets in like it would it'll eat anything that it that it touches basically yeah okay let's um let's move along shall we dark elves um 69 games played 44 percent win rate what do we think of dark elves i think dark elves definitely fits uh the chris play style and you know yeah as we said the dragons but you know they've got a lot of fast cav um flying characters uh lots of shooting i mean chris did play uh dark elves at the etc many mo moons ago as well so uh it's not his first rodeo um for the dark elves for sure and you can do sort of uh like death tags with always strike first and a really high attack profile are a really nice place to put things like a dragon slaying sword or an ogre blade because they can put they can protect themselves just by killing whatever charged mm. them before it gets a chance to strike the death tags are really cool they're, they're kind of the same as the wood elf war dancer um the shadow dancer whatever it is in that like they have a muck a bucket of attacks with strike first and quite high weapon skill i think the war dance i think the shadow dance is better because it's a weapon skill eight um mm -hmm. always strikes first so it hits dragons on threes but they're quite fun i I've, i have been looking at those as like cheap little units that you actually have to deal with for like 100 points for a, a death tag with a with a bit of offensive kit mm -hmm. um yeah. and yeah i'm obviously enamored by dragons but also pegasus riders as well uh slightly annoyed by the dark elf list where you're you can't put a battle standard bearer like the hero level characters uh can't have pegasus mounts which is slightly unfortunate probably for the but... best <laughs> <laughs> that's annoying yeah because there was a time where a pegasus rider was the sort of meta best dark elf thing you could do uh but i guess now it's one or two dragons instead I also really like uh, oh. warlocks as well. The uh, getting extra bound spells that yeah. can sit twenty four inches away from whatever they're trying to shoot with the magic missile, and hopefully be out of dispel range for your opponent. Uh, throwing around, I think it's the demonology signature spell. Can uh, yeah, you can get a lot of damage output out of those kind of units rather than having to take repeater crossbows, which I think j just generally in the game. That kind of light arms fire is not getting a lot of bang for its buck, but magic missiles give you heaps. What laws can they take? It's demonology or dark magic, and they can choose choose one spell of any of them, which they can cast at power level two if they have at least five models and a champion. What about your um, sorceress? I'm not sure. I think it's illusion and dark and demonology chris is that right for uh sounds right uh they can definitely have demonology because uh yeah the, the sort of three copies of demonology signature spell and a ruby ring of ruin starts to be uh, that's going to melt people's chaff very quickly uh if you can mm. keep out of dispel range so collectability what's 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 the collectability like because they're you know people can't buy the gw dark elves at all but what what are there in terms of alternate sculpts? There, there is quite a bit of the Games Workshop stuff still on the Age of Sigma list under uh, cities. three cities or whatever the yeah. the factions, but it's mostly the infantry, which, as as we sort of discussed, is not really the thing that's drawing me to any particular army. I mean, there's I also the, do the 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 full daughters of Cain range, right? Like all the um all the witch elves and the cauldron and warlocks and those kind of things should still be witch available elves. witch elves <laughs> sisters of slaughter i don't know if they're they're still any good um i mean and that probably leads to another question which we probably haven't really covered chris like you know what kind of aesthetic do you want your army like to be like do you want it to be super old school um 
you know, with, you know, more like, mm. you know, nostalgic uh, sculpts or do you want some of the newer ranges mm. that you, you'd want to, you know, bring in? I, th I think I'm more leaning towards newer stuff, whether it's from mm. Games Workshop itself or other companies. I think that the kinds of big, well, well firstly, the size of models now that the base size has increased. Mm. Uh, so bigger, bulkier sculpts fit better now than they used to. And also just as sculpting technology has improved and competition has increased, I think there's just loads of really cool things that you can uh, that you can get now that didn't used to be the case, whether that's porting Warcry models or blood, some yeah. of the Blood Bowl teams with hand swaps uh, from Games Workshop, as well as 3D prints and um, other model companies. Yeah, I, I think the newer style of model is probably what I'd be leaning towards rather than a sort of nostalgia based you know fifth edition what answer kind of <laughs> approach so no metal models is what you're saying which breaks my heart uh, if it comes in metal that's fine but uh yeah like i, th I think if i'm getting something with a, a kind of unified aesthetic i would be th thinking more along the the modern sculpt lines than mm. uh six you know the, the sort of older older style and, and is that what you want, kind of something with a unified aesthetic? Like the orcs, you don't have to. You can kind of a little bit of variation and whatnot's a part of it. High elves is kind of like obviously the very opposite end of the spectrum. On the on a orc or skaven spectrum through to high elves, where, where do you want to sit in terms of the unification of your models? It's probably more towards the orc end, but if it's a hobby project, and that's kind of what I'm thinking, there's probably a decent amount of scope to kit bash and mash things up or uh, add in unit fillers and things to break up even a really sort of regimented unified aesthetic. So I'd be, I'd be pretty keen to look at, e even if it was something like high elves, I'd still be pretty keen to look at ways of changing up the, you know, the models within a unit and mixing things around so that there's, mm. yeah. So that things are visually broken up rather than it being, yeah, kind of, regimented lines like uh like total war units yeah okay so uh, a dark elves um in in the lead of the three armies we've uh, covered thus far i i've ha definitely had a bit more of a look at them beforehand and i do it, it would let me both play dragons which i love and also be a hipster and feel superior which i also like uh so th there's a lot to like about the dark elves from the ones we've looked at so far but the the Skaven is the one that's intrigued me the most for a second look. The uh, yeah, the speed of the giant rats and dragging, uh, dragging screaming bells and furnaces around with a, a fast-moving unit. Uh, I don't know how it works exactly yet, but that definitely merits uh, some attention, which I haven't given them before. Mm. Mm. Okay, let's um, let's move on to dwarves. So 113 games Pass. played, so pretty popular as far as it goes, but 45% win rate. Three movement off the table. Surely, yeah. yeah the, for me, the big problem is that the things that should be mitigating, or that in the past you could use to mitigate some of the movement downsides, just aren't really doing it. Uh, yeah, there's. I don't think you can anvil things around anymore with double movements like you used to be able to, um, or at least you can't charge with it, which used to be the big, uh, the big benefit you, from you, it. You can't charge, but you, you can yeah. move units around with the anvil. Um, and your Strahlizer's rune is only moving three inches forward, which is just not enough to be really worth it. So you're really shoehorned into a defensive build, which can be like, pretty good. I think organ guns are great, and you can definitely negate dragons with tough characters and ridiculous static combat resolution. But I can't see it being something that keeps me engaged to play it with they're they're a reactive army they're defensive it's not that's not you they're not proactive yes they got gyros gyros zip around and you know you can do a little bit of stuff with them but i don't, I don't they don't sound like you to me i think um, we can put so the chaos well, yeah. in the same bucket though because like the chaos Dwarfs have a bit <laughs> bit more they've got the bale taurus and the lamasu which is quite fun and they and the mm -hmm. the skull crackers are quite cool the, the trains that like basically are steam tanks that that hit a bit better but i suspect that the same beyond the fact that you're a raging bigot and hate chaos dwarves i think 
they basically are in a similar bucket as dwarves, like elite blocks of infantry that have a bit more stuff around them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, it's an army where there's a few units that I really like, like the, the uh, Bull Torox as well. Um, yeah, mobile, very chunky characters. So there's some units that are individually that I kind of like, but yeah, uh, if you have to have two or three blocks of movement three infantry, it's very hard to, to get excited about that. Plus, of course, it's not a real army. Well, they've got Black Orcs. Black Orcs move four. Black Orcs are pretty great, um, you know, not, not biased. Um, and they've got magic. So I reckon they're way better in terms of potential than um, dwarves. They're nowhere near as um, unidimensional. Um, but um, they're still not your thing and you, uh, you hate them. So maybe we move along to Demons. Uh, not so popular with 55 games played, 47% win rate. They got some stuff that can move. They you can have some bright offensive colours. You can put your blues and reds in there if you feel you, you need to do so. Um, I don't reckon they're going away anytime soon because um, they're a, you know, a very iconic GW thing. There's probably tons of alternate sculpts for them because they're just kind of wacky demons. You can do what you like. Don't have to worry about uniformity, but how, do they, how are they going on the table? I've not played against them. Have any of you played a game with or against demons? I, I've read the book a couple or the, the PDF a couple of times, but haven't actually seen them in action. There's a few units in there that I do really like. The the plague drones are uh, yeah. you know, I, I mean, flying monstrous cavalry as Pegasus Knights are demonstrating are incredible. And I I, I I also really like soul grinders not so much the model yeah. but the actual profile i think is really cool reddit reckons that um flamers are the um uh the best shooting in um the old world yeah you know just read it so who knows but um you know maybe there's something there yeah i mean if flamers are actually good and the soul grinder or, or i think or whatever yeah uh, so, soul grinder is shooting you know you can run around with flame cannon a mobile flame cannon on a soul grinder for example uh a lot of potential shenanigans that they can do uh, and there's just a lot of units as well when you've got all four of the different uh mm. the different alignments allied together uh i'm not I, i'm, I'm not going to restrain myself and only play you know one you know, a single faction uh because my theme is that chaos is Multi multiplying and embraces all manner of creation uh, rather than uh, not letting my play drones have horrors as core or something like that. It's very inclusive mm. of you. Um, mm. I think you could I, probably... I include you know, all powerful units in my list. <laughs> you could definitely, uh, you know, make some highly mobile demon lists, so, though, you know, whether it's with the, um, the play drones or, you know, things like the Bloodthirsters um or even what are the slanesh um fast cab called um they're not the, the, seekers. Hell the seekers yeah and and the fiends of slanesh so like i could definitely mm -hmm. see you know that being up your alley chris whether or not they're good or not i can't i don't know what the, you know i can't make a exact call on but i could definitely say it yeah hmm. that's an interesting one i hadn't really put a lot of time into considering yet uh, i also don't know what the sort of alternative ranges available are uh, has, has, are any of you familiar with sort of there's, good alternate options? There's quite a lot I know because of 40k. That there's mm -hmm. lots of 3D printed ones, especially, but I've I've not looked too too deeply into them because I, the only god that I like is Nurgle, and Nurgle does not look very fun in this edition. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's lots of Cthulhu stuff out there just on the internet. I reckon there'd be tons of 3D um, printing scope to get um, demon-like stuff there. And, you know, that it doesn't need to look like anything in particular because, you know, demons. Um, yeah. Anyway, all right. How about Lizardmen? Lizardmen are 37 games played, which is the least popular army um, with a 47% win rate. But interestingly, for games less than 2,000 points, um, they've got a 59% win rate. Um, you know, again, small statistics, only 17 games played there. But um, Lizardmen are a little bit ponderous. But they've got some zippy stuff, you know, with your little javelin throwing dudes, and you've got some big, big griblies. Yeah, Lizardmen, I've played a couple of times in the past, but but it was always based around 
uh, old bloods and scar veterans being mobile and super tanky and just nightmarishly hard to deal with. And I'm not sure if that's the same that if that's the case anymore. Double carnosaur list, Chris. Double <laughs> carnosaur list. I think it is still the same. Mm -hmm. um, the because you can get a carnosaur on a scar vet, not just on an old blood. Um, they're pretty difficult to deal with, I think. The, the problem with them is, right, that they're basically trying to do a dragon list that doesn't fly and that gets mm. frenzy once you kill one unit. Um, but they are very good. Mm. It's a bit of a disadvantage. It's like the, the, I think the real thing with the lizards is that they've really nerfed the slan into being pretty bad for its points because it's a monster, so it can't yeah. see 360 degrees, has to pivot can't be oh, protected yeah. so you have to go ethereal i'm just i think that for me has really dampened my enthusiasm about them but the skinks are good i mm -hmm. can't remember chris ever playing slime lists so so it probably you know the nerf of the slime doesn't actually make too much of a difference possibly yeah. not I, <laughs> I, th I think in this edition it probably would more because i think mm. just for magic defense you used to be able to sure. take one wizard with a couple of dispel scrolls that that doesn't really cut it anymore you you really want a level four for defensive purposes mm -hmm. and the slam's got yeah. some good anti-magic upgrades as well but yeah the problem is it, it just gets killed way too easily so if i could if i could get a slan and two cheap carnosaurs that'd be a pretty a pretty <laughs> tempting uh start to a list but i'm not sure if the points will fit and also yeah people can maybe just run past the carnosaurs and kill the slan a bit too easily but i yeah, I've not. I've only played against lizards once, so I'm not sure as to all the different things they can do. Croxigore are pretty good in this edition, aren't they? They're all right. They're strength seven. They can charge through skink units. They've got the chariot runner rule for skinks, so they get to mm -hmm. like make charges through the skinks, which is really cool. Um, strength seven scares dragons. I think they're all right. Yeah. And they got some great new models as well. With the the Age of Sigma uh, range mm. has been really kind to Lizard Men. They they are huge though. Trying to get them onto forty mil bases, I think, is going to take some work. Just uh, ha have unit fillers every second model yeah, can just cross. Yeah, or, or just a couple of nostrils put uh, in a swamp. You know, the crocodile about to uh, about to strike. Mm. Okay. So maybe a, a contender, possibly, but mm. All right. yeah. That, I, do we I'm have not anyone? sure. That another one where I'd need a, a close look at exactly what you can fit into a list, because I think in my head, all the stuff I'd want probably ends up being like three and a half thousand points. Fair, fair. Do we have any ogres in the room? Anyone who knows anything about ogre kingdoms? Fifty-six games played, forty-seven percent win rate. What do we think? played exactly Locking. one game i think that uh dave's been doing some theory hammer as well um but probably not played any games i think no, your, I your them, stuff's yeah. still yeah, yeah. still still based on rounds right mm. um yeah I'm, I'm not sure about ogres i think you know stone horns seem really good you know like tyrants on yeah. stone horns with the tenderizer and so and a bit of kit there um beyond that I, i'm not super sure because you know you still need a unit of bulls and they're not you know super great um i think you know that the infantry just feels very slow compared to a lot of the fast moving models around um i i have a feeling that you know maybe th uh lists with three gorges and then you know a bunch of really fast hitting units like yeah, yeah. like the stone horns like uh vanguarding man eaters potentially could be could be strong um but uh i have always uh, yeah i just keep finding and i reckon you'd you'd come up against this chris as well as like you can't fit everything you want because everything's so expensive um unless you play lots of yetis and i think they're bad <laughs> I, I did have a look. You can probably get like 1,200 points scouting, I think, mm. in the list, which does appeal to me as a bit of a, a funny thing to do. You just like make your opponent deploy and then put all your yetis down and, you know, like three units of yetis and hunters and things down just wherever they don't want them. Yeah. But what do you think? Sure so, it's actually good. It just looks fun. They're just so expensive. Like, I think, like, if you drop the points on a few things, like man eaters and things like that, like, you know, 
suddenly like if you dropped them by, by five points a model or something like that like suddenly we're talking like they're they're throwing out a lot of attacks and they're really tanky but um yeah currently i think they're just i don't know my, that's my feeling they're just a little bit overcosted. what do you think about doing them as a four stone horn list can you fit four yeah oh, i suppose two, you, yeah not not the ones on characters right two 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 characters and then two as rare choices then you take your one unit of three mm. balls. Then you take two <laughs> units of ten saber tusks as core with vanguard, mm. and two units of two saber tusks with scout as blockers sure. and vanguard as well, so that they get into scout and then vanguard after scouting. Um, and that's your army. But basically, they, the only place they can get points off you is four stone horns. Um. <laughs> I'd say that the stone horns without tyrants on them are probably pretty bad. I, I don't think they're great, <laughs> but they're still, you know, you got to come get toughness them. six, six wounds, four up save, mm. minus one to multi. Like they're still work to get through. Mm. And, and I think with that kind of uh, multiplication, you also get the advantage of your stone horns. The the weak stone horns aren't going to be so much matched up against your opponent's best things it's going to be their sort of third and fourth units that they're going to have to start putting into your auxiliary stone horn um or they're just going to be ignoring the two with tyrants on them uh it does sound mm -hmm. kind of funny uh be, or, i'd be a little worried about go on i was gonna say or you can drop one of the stone horns and then put three gorges in and they just come up you know behind uh yeah, yeah. behind them and just yeah cause cause havoc and they're they're mm. a pain in the ass to get rid of as well or the the other one might be dropping one of the tyrants on the stone horn to get a level four and a battle standard bear in uh just to you know you change the list a bit but you potentially can increase the reliability quite a bit I'm not sure you need the Battle Standard Bearer because there's a 15 point upgrade that gives you a general an ability, which means everyone in his command range gets to re-roll Panic, Fear, and Terror. So it doesn't save you for break mm -hmm. checks, but it, it's an 18 inch bubble on the Stone Horn. Panic's not so much of a worry. I, I the, the level four mm -hmm. is a pain. The problem is the le the level four for ogres is expensive, and then you need to spend more on a unit for him to go into. He can't go into three bulls, otherwise he's going to get you know held up by something absolutely garbage mm. um interesting i think yeah stone horns is the thing that uh has my attention there the most well i would have thought that um you'd be rooting for the for the wood elves um 107 games played uh 49 win rate um they satisfy all of your shenaniganery fast moving they've got dragons they avoid they shoot um they do stuff um that's got to be right up there on your consideration list yeah they they do tick a lot of the boxes as yeah probably one of the armies that just as long as warham has been around just most controls the way the game plays out uh um yeah uh definitely a tempting option although a little weak to magic missiles is potentially a, a concern, but I know you've been looking at what else quite a bit, Dave. Yeah, very, I mean, cripplingly weak to magic missiles, except for the units that have evasive. And why that is, is because you can put them at the edge of a wood. Someone targets you with a magic missile, which is a shooting attack, use evasive to fall back in good order. You're out of their line of sight. They get to continue their magic missile as they would, which is the magic missile fails because it can't target you because you're out of line of sight and they lose the magic missile. So, the, which you have evasive on all of your fighting characters, you have evasive on Deepwood Scouts, it's on Gla uh, on our Warhawk Riders. I think the Wood Elves are a good option, but if if you come up against a Zinch Magic Missile Farm army, you're going to lose. You, they're going to outshoot you, um, and you're not survivable enough to kind of take them back, I suspect. Mm -hmm. And they do get a dragon, but it's sort of... The, the in a way from the looks of things the weakest of the the true dragons that sounds right yep. up your tree to me what about the tree what? men are they are they tanky enough to kind of you know get up in the grill of the uh of the zinch uh, uh magic missile farm 
they're not fast enough. They're, mm. they're movement five and no really good ways to get faster um, up the table. Sure. And so you could get to the Magic Missile Farm in turn three. Um, but even then, you don't just power through. You're quite tough. Toughness six, four up, five up save. Four, four up save, five up in, um, regeneration. But yeah, I think you'd need to go hunting it with the dragon and basically risk your dragon getting taken out to try and charge the magic missile casters. And that's a big gamble. Mm. Are they, um, but it's got the, the dragons and warhawks. They do have the movement to get to uh, magic missile caddies and things really quickly. Uh, you only have to wear you know, what sort of one turn of magic missiles on your fast stuff. Um, yeah. And they, they seem to gorgeous. me like the quintessential Chris Mad um, uh, you know, team or army in, in that they can do all of the stuff. And the reason they can do that is because they're, you know, weak as piss. They, you know, they die to anything. But if you manage their weakness, um, then you'll do all right. And that's kind of your thing, right? That does sound kind of appealing, although it does seem a lot trickier to do with uh, that level of finesse when, yeah, I, I guess uh, my my other worry would be whether you have a way to uh, kind of stop or outplay the other big dragons as or whether they get kind of sandwiched between, on the one hand, needing to be able to run at the magic missile armies, but also needing to have an answer to dragons and i don't think wood elves can do the big static res bunkers that we've talked about as being an option and they don't seem to have lots of medium aggressive units to kill the army while the enemy dragon is uh yeah is sort of bogged down i think that the wood elf dragon actually stalemates all the other dragons in close combat because it yeah. has Annoyance of Netlings, which drops their the minus one to hit. And then it has Befuddlement of Mischiefs, which drops their weapon skill and initiative by one. So every dragon in the game is at best hitting you at fives and you're hitting it at threes. It, they will all have better defensive kit than you. You'll just have a four up, five up save, whereas they'll have a, like a three up or a two up, five up, five up. But I actually think it takes them a really long time to get through the Wood Elf Dragon because they're just hitting it on fives. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, vampire counts. 76 games played, so middle of the road in terms of popularity. 49% win rate, but they do have a fantastic dragon. Mm. Well, and, and that's not all. There's also the, uh, the terror geist if yeah. you want to uh, combine your dragons with screams. Mm. Okay. I, they, I, so, I, uh, I think the 49% here is, is a... Is a an entire artifact of people not having built Taking vampire armies for the new edition. Like, yeah, I think vamps sure. are incredibly strong. You just need to do a really weird vampire list, which is like a bunch of screams and tricky stuff, and it's not what vamps used to be. But this yeah. is an army where I, I, I agree. I think the book is actually really strong, and there's a lot of different options to it. This would maybe be one where something a bit off kilter. Uh, could still be really competitive and might actually fit more the sort of thing that I'm looking for. Because playing with a bunch of unkillable zombie blocks and four or five screams doesn't sound super appealing to me, even though it's probably the most reliable, efficient version of the build. But there's Blood Knights and Terror Geists and Var Geists and Strigoi Ghoul Kings and Zombie Dragons. And all of that's pretty good. So I wonder if there's something to some of the rest of the pile of stuff that might be able to come together into maybe not the best version of a vampire list, but a, a good and different list that's still competitive, even if it's not the kind of the optimal version. I've got to be honest, when I think about avoidance armies, vampire counts aren't up there unless it's avoiding points by burying them with zombies. Um, mm -hmm. And there ain't yeah. much in the way of shooting, but... Um, just not yeah, not being able to flee not being able to flee is pretty big, but obviously being able to like you know just uh, chat people up with a bunch of you know really cheap um, things or or spawn them 
uh, and just hit them with screams definitely sounds interesting. Um, I think you can also pick up quite a bit of um, cheaper, like, you know, flesh eater corpse um, because, mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, there's just a, people have bought a shitload of fle flesh eater corpse um, during AOS when they were completely busted. Um, so you can definitely get them pretty cheap if that's something you're looking to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, and there's just again, tons of just interesting models are great. Mm, or just good. any undead models, right? Like there's a little bit of undead stuff available out there in the 3D printing world. Mm. You know, few people like skeletons and zombies and stuff. They're yeah. And yeah, again, okay. yeah, four yeah. terrorgeist lists. This is the future. Four monster lists. Just <laughs> choose one thing and spam it four times. I, I'm not going to lie. I I did have a very close look at just how cool a four. What is it? Four terror guys with a level four necromancer could be uh, it looks really tasty uh and definitely suits me I, i'm slightly disheartened by the base sizes of terror yeah. geists the, yeah. the uh, even though you think you've got a lot of space with a six by four table uh once you get some terrain on it uh those big bases become pretty unwieldy but at the same time they can all fly and scream and fight and it does do a lot of the things that I'm looking for, uh, yeah, very, very tempting at, at least. Uh, okay. Although I don't fancy trying to paint that Terra Geist model four times. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So um, after that comes Orcs and Goblins, 136 games played, which is, uh, I think, yeah, what's third highest, 53% um, win rate. But it'd be a bit awkward to um, to go from Orcs to Orcs uh... again. Um, but in the interest of this Awkward. not just being about you and your army choice thing, um, what, how are they as an as an army for for those who are actually thinking about just choosing an army based on this? I think they're really powerful and they're quite fun. Like they're you know, traditionally been quite random, but a lot of that's been taken out of the new book. And the things that are still a bit random are most their kind of fail case isn't too bad. Like you can get so many fanatics pretty cheaply. Your magic might feel a bit uh, a bit random, but you can buy rerolls to make them more reliable. It's pretty easy to play armies that just don't get affected by impetuosity at all. Between mm. Black Orcs and Night Goblins not having it, and all of the uh, the squeak units as well. Mm. Um, just a, a, and the book is extremely deep, especially with the Arcane Journal out as well. Uh, I think that's underexplored at the moment, but. If you're just looking for one army that can kind of do everything that you might want to do and has some really uh, strong competitive builds, I think Orcs and Goblins do fit the bill for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I picked them to start with and to kind of learn the game, and I'm happy I did because they compete in all facets of it and they've got a bit of everything. Uh, and, yeah, like I said at the start, I'm not, I'm not bored with them, but there's just so much else out there to try. And I kind of feel it's time to, uh, yeah, time, time to experiment with some other things. But if you're looking to start an army uh, or a new army and you haven't already tried the Orcs and Goblins, there's just a lot to like about them. Uh, yeah. All right. Also, yeah, a uh, key thing is that fanatics are just heinously right. good. Mm. Just uh, and, and for your opponent, an absolute nightmare to play against. So if you're playing casually, I would not take too many of them. And if you're trying to play competitively, I would say nine to 15 is probably a good number. So on my, um, on my list, I, um, I like that it can be a reasonably competitive list by taking kind of one of everything. You don't have to just do tons of one meta thing. You can take a unit of night goblins, a unit of black orcs, Unit of boar riders, they're all good. You can get a wyvern, a level four, chuck in a couple of spear chuckers, maybe some um, squeak hoppers. You can kind of participate in all of the phases and you're not just doing one thing, which, I don't know, for me is a bit of fun. But the next one on our list is Bretonia, second most game played with 154, 53% uh, win rate. But, um, you know, the peasants, um, you don't like that aspect. But if it weren't for that, they do have those flying knights we spoke about, and they move pretty, pretty well. They're pretty tough. Yeah, Pegasus knights are incredible. I just, I, 
if every army had access to something like that, I think the game would be, well, I guess kind of boring because that would be all you'd need to take. Um, mm. and yeah. Maybe the opposite of what you're saying about orcs and goblins, where you can make a, a really competitive army just by taking a bit of everything. I feel like Bretonians mm. really need to load up on the flyers, not just for the mobility, but also the damage output on Pegasus Knights is much better than your sort of Knights of the Realm and, you know, the... Uh, most of your other options so they're both your best damage output and your most mobile unit and you put your characters on pegasi to run around with them as well and have a really good army but not a super varied one hmm. what what yeah. bretonians do have going for them though i think you know a few armies have this but like bretonians particularly is just the hobby side of things you know um some of the uh, things like the Grail Knights, but also the, just that massive blocks of Knights and the Pegasus Knights as well, um, just lend themselves so much to, you know, just being, you know, getting really detailed, the really bright colours and in intricate, you know, patterns and things like that, which, you know, if you wanted to, a, to really challenge yourself, Chris, that, I mean, that would be a hobby project that you could definitely embark on. Um, and, and something that wasn't an option mm -hmm. in the past, but now is, is you could get a box of the, uh, the Knights of the Realm on foot and then sprinkle all of those parts through all of your, your mounted knight units. Uh, and I think that would, yeah, help vary things up a lot. So you just have uh, a load more conversion options just out of the core range than they used to have in the past because the actual knights themselves are a bit samey, but now you've got the option of having all this mix and match stuff to do a lot of cool stuff with them. They also have, I think, the most fun magic items in the game, like the Falcon Horn. They ha they can do in incredibly good builds on the on the different fighting characters with all of the vows and the, and the magic items from the Arcane Journal. Um, the 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 magic like the amount of time you can play tinkering with characters mm. in the Brett list is really fun. Like they really feel powerful and heroic, um, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. And actually, to speak of the Arcane Journal, uh, I, I did have a really strong uh, uh, dislike of the fluff behind the core army and its peasants, but the renegade barony outlaw factions are really appealing to me as a sort of the, the opposite to that, uh, you know, Renaissance surf kind of uh, background. Instead, it's, yeah, the Border Princes, the Outlaws your Robin Hoods, that actually has me a lot more excited. Can you take a lot of Pegasus Knights in the uh, the Border Princes option? I don't know. That's a good question. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll investigate, but that actually, I, it only just occurred to me, but that's maybe a way that I can both get to play with ridiculous flying nonsense and also have a, a pleasing thematic fluff background to uh, to justify it. Slightly less Tory Bretonians. Hmm. Are foot knights good enough that you can make infantry viable? No. <laughs> right. I, okay. I did play one game against the foot knights, and they were actually really good with a wizard in there giving them uh, uh, a regen save, a reward save. Uh, but that list also had like four units of uh, peasants to chew through as well. So it was actually just the spam of infantry. There's so many of them that uh by the time you were chewing through some of them the uh flyers and the cavalry were able to get round but just on rate i yeah it's pretty hard to justify spending lots of points on infantry blocks okay so how about high elves coming in at number four 90 game 91 games played 53 percent um win rate um what do you think i mean i I think they've got dragons. That's a the f literally the first list I wrote for the old world was a high elf list with three dragons and two phoenixes. So uh, that that tells you something about uh, about my my high elf related thoughts. But I'm interested as to what everyone else has to say about not the dragon spam version because again, high elves have loads of units and some of them seem pretty good. Griffins are good. <laughs> yeah. Swordmasters seem um, pretty good. Thoughts when playing against them? I've played I, against I them a few yeah. times. Mm -hmm. the, the Swordmasters are, are pretty good. I mean, I think they're they're hard to get to pay off, like because you you sort of need to deploy them really wide for them to actually have the impact, which makes them not very mobile. 
And when I've played against them, the players are kind of relying on having a mage in there with high magic to make them ethereal with reserve move, which is really good if, when it goes off. But I've been kind of able to avoid them. Um, I think if you were playing more blocky infantry armies, they'd be a real terror. Um, but I think if people are playing more MSU, more mobile stuff, I, I think they they struggle a bit. But I think there's other better things in the high elf list. The Tyranok chariots. I don't know if people have looked at these um, so far, but they they are insane when they when they pay off. The the because mm -hmm. you can you can now take them as units, not just as one as single models. So you get to take like a unit of three Tyranok chariots that each of them is doing. I think it's D6 plus one impact hits at strength five. No, just D6 impact hits at strength five. Um, but they're not they're not very expensive, you know, 75 points a pop. And they're still movement nine, swift stride. Um, they're really scary when I've played against them. They, they like have an incredible threat range. And if they charge you, or yeah. most things don't like it. That sounds great, actually, because what one thing I've been looking at with the orcs is the goblin chariots, really cheap, but they only do D three impact hits. So mm. yeah, Tyranox. Oh, and they don't have Swiss stride, I think, or at least the boar chariots don't. So yeah, Board, the extra uh, mobility on the Tyranox and the extra impact sounds really nice, and not something I'd looked at before. Yeah, I, mm. they they really caught me out. I got charged. My big big unit of like eleven knights got charged by them, and they basically killed all the knights. It's a pretty good advertisement for them. Yeah. yeah that's Do you like the the, the feel of them? Like, I personally, I reckon I'm I'm going to love to do a, a high elf army. I reckon I reckon they're, they're going to be great. Um, but does that uh, you feel to me more like a chaosy type? Um, the the destruction chaos, like more than just like their unified good guys type stuff. But maybe I'm wrong. I I played high elves in the past uh when the star dragon came out that was uh that was pretty fun uh and i, I yeah I, I don't have any problem playing with the good guys mm. it's m more often though the big kind of gribbly monsters tend to be on the evil side and because that's what i gravitate towards i've probably played more of that over the stretch but i think that's mm. just more that the the units i like playing with tend to be more on the, the chaos side of things but when they do pop up on the good guys teams, I uh, will happily switch colors and uh, yeah, join in the high elf fun. How's the high elf cav? The the silver helms are probably the best core that high elves yeah. have, um, and they're they're fine core, like they're they're all right knights. The the dragon princes are really good, but they they're impetuous. Um, and with the FAQ on how impetuous and frenzy works that you can't block it and then move normally if you fail, I I, I don't know. Others might have be more positive about them. But for me, because because the Dragon Prince has cost, like, I think it's like 37 points a model um, for one toughness three wound that has impetuous, it's just too, mm. it's too many available points for your opponent, I think, would be my read. Mm. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. All right, I, I let's move played on. against the Dragon Princes a couple of times, and when we got to adding up the points at the end, I just couldn't believe how many points a unit of like five or six of them cost. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I and an additional worry, I guess, is that they end up a bit like the Empire, where you sort of just want to take all of the cavalry things, and then there's a lot of the book that you maybe don't end up with. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, at least you can take three dragons, two phoenixes, and some silver helms as core which does does appeal to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In number three, Tomb Kings. Um, 152 games played. So they're actually the third most played, uh, and that makes sense because they're a new release. 56% um, 50, win rate. Um, they certainly have um, a big gribbly. Um, but what about the rest of them? The dragon's really scary, like and yeah. just like the the ability to ignore um, a, a bunch of the crumble. So like you know they're just not um, vulnerable to some of the the big combat res units. Uh, it's just yeah, that's it's really scary. And the that, that was the problem I had when I played against it. Mm. 
was uh, yeah was able to win combat by like four or five a couple of times, but then it's only taking two or three extra wounds. Um, and because you're not doing actual wounds to get that yeah. combat resolution, only crumbling it by a couple doesn't really matter very much. Can you I think two kings are gross. I think they're so gross. <laughs> the, 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 they, they can really do some absolute... No, I don't think it's as powerful as the vampire scream list, but they can also do some really scary leadership bomb stuff mm. on top of the dragon with like casket, the screaming skull catapult, um, terror from the, the dragon. The necrosphinx is really nasty um, to go up against. The casket's really powerful. I I think they're probably harder to play than some of the other top armies um, because you, you're sort of dealing with some undead limitations, but they're I, they're really scary. I, I, I think they're one of the, the stronger ones around. Tomb Scorpion did a pretty good rap um, online. Um, another little thing that's kind of like shenanigan -y type stuff, so that kind of fits a little. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've got lots of mobility options. Your chariots just come with reserve move as standard. Loads of flight, like not just the dragon, but yeah, the necro sphinx with fly, carrion as well ambushes if you want them uh they can reach out and touch things pretty well and yeah undead is you know you crumble and they're a bit vulnerable but they're super reliable and the shooting as well just hitting on fives in this game is so good with the volume of shots they can pump out yeah mm. okay mm. modeling opportunities probably got to look beyond games workshop if you want uh you know, particularly good models for your, for a lot of the core stuff, especially. Or Although maybe you can port over modern... some vampire things. Yeah, if you're going for the modern look, Chris, you're definitely not not the, uh, <laughs> the late 90s, early 1000s sculpts. There's plenty of good alternative models, though. I mean, skeletons are skeletons there's... at the end of the day, right? I mean, there's absolutely loads of, of different, like, 3D print designers for Tomb Kings, especially mm -hmm. after the release. I mean, there's, like... Like one page rules has loads. Um, Taxari factory has loads. Um, there's, there's there's lots of options there. I I do think for me that would be a massive downside. Is like I just think some of the Tomb King models that they've kept on, like the skeletons, are unforgivably bad. <laughs> but the yeah. the flip side of that is you get to do creative modeling things and you know like look a long way beyond the Games Workshop range. Yeah. to find some cool stuff and yeah like doing bright colors with a background of sort of bone and uh weapons can pop really nicely so you can definitely do some really good looking tomb king armies if you if you're not relying too much on the uh you know, 300 year old skeleton models i think you guys are giving those sculpts a bad rap i mean i fi personally find them very endearing i think you know the true crime is actually selling them at the prices that tw are selling them at the moment for <laughs> tw 25 year old models <laughs> yeah well I mean, look more pumpkin heads for you matey if you're <laughs> if you're into them you can, you can go for them love it <laughs> all righty and coming in at number two warriors of chaos with 156 165 games played, making them the most popular army. 58% win rate. Um, they do dragons. They do the dragon, that's for sure. They do dragons and magic missiles and extremely potent cavalry and can move fast and hit hard and have incredibly good models from the Age of Sigma range with the new Marauders coming out. It's... This is definitely one of the, the armies at the top of my list. The, so the, why shouldn't I play Warriors of Chaos? The, the twist is for this episode is that um, we've gone through all 16 um, armies and we're just going to get to now Chaos and then Beastmen and um, you know, the, the, the two best ones, which have everything that Chris wants and Chris will be like, oh, I'll just go for them. <laughs> I, I, think you, I think you shouldn't because Warriors are going to, everyone's going to play them, right? Like they're mm. the most available model range that looks mm. really good. They're very strong and that they're they're incredibly kind to new players because you can just you can kind of just push some of the armies forward and you won't win a tournament, but you won't lose all your games. Um mm -hmm. I think that's the downside. But like you say, Chris, they they're probably the best magic army in the game. They have probably the best dragon in the game. And things like single dragon ogres are just incredibly powerful. 
Yeah, you mm. get a thousand points of characters, three individual dragon ogres, an extra rare unit, and then five hundred points of core. And ninety points of that is three units of warhounds, which are, yeah, I, I think underratedly one of the most efficient units you can get in the entire game for yeah. what you're trying to use them for. Warhounds have always been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Them and harpies, which we'll talk about with um, mm. with with beasties, but um, clearly this is an army you've already been looking at, and uh, and you know is 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 right up the top there. All right, so then let's. Um... Yeah, I, I guess the the originality is the main the main downside yeah. because the th the builds that I like that suit what I want to do are exactly the same ones that other people are doing at the moment. So I could join yeah. them or I could try to beat them. Yep. All right, beasties. 58% win rate, 73 games played. They're not as popular, um, but uh, they've mm -hmm. got some they got some griblies. They do some pretty freaky shooting. They move fast. They are most, there's a lot of infantry, but you can do your minotaur and whatnot. Not that they're very good. What do you think? I wonder how much this army is propped up by, what is it, 35 points of the hag tree fetish? Yeah, mm. a lot. And this is these stats are prior to the FAQ that stopped you using the Hag Tree Fetish on your Ruby Ring of Ruin, mm. um, which was a big, big nerf. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so I, I do like magic missiles, and Beastmen do that really nicely. Yeah. And also, the, the, the yeah. infantry are actually really quite fun and good because you like the, the gore are good, the gores are actually good. And ambushes like a, a gore with an additional hand weapon and ambusher is eight points, and like primal fury, like special yeah. rules are good. Like yeah. they're actually one. Of, I, like I really think the beastmen are one of the couple of armies in the game that can run infantry armies as a competitive option. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like this in the same reason that I thought the Skaven thing is cool. Like the the, the models that you actually want, like the ones that there should be tons of are good and worth taking. Take the gore in the same way that you take the giant rats. I reckon that's great. You got your your gorgons there with heroic killing blow. Um, you know, you can take a couple of those if if you want. Um, so they're not a bad gribbly. Don't take the cygore, but the gorgon pretty good. And your doom bull is a the doom bull is monster. Yeah, atrocious. He's so good. Yeah. You can't put him on a carpet anymore, though. That is a big drawback. That, that was always the, the main... Uh appeal of the old beastman list for me was a flying doom bull although to be fair that was the main appeal of most, most lists nice. was combat characters on flying carpets uh they've definitely restricted that a bit now but uh yeah the the doom bull offense the magic that you can get out of the list and yeah the, the ambushes and gores angle is the bit i hadn't really looked at before but if that's good as well and you can get some real value out of the core unit i can see why they're doing pretty well because they've got it, like everything else is pretty good the things they don't have like uh super you know ranked infantry just waddling forward or light arm shooting are the things that aren't particularly good in the game anyway so the things that they're lacking are things you probably don't even want the it's chariots are good dragon yeah. ogres like they've got like harpies for your chaff and redirecting like they, they can, get warhounds as well they do just everything yeah yeah, yeah. Right. It, I, I i reckon my vote for you chris is beastman i think they are mm. one of the less played armies in the game they have awesome different options like, there's such a deep list they've got so many different options in each slot they're really mobile they hit really hard and i think there's just a massive font of bullshit that you can drink from like there's so many different sneaky you know, sneaky crisp bullshit armies that you're going to be able to pull out with this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that that is kind of tempting. I, yeah, I, I like the idea of it, and I I do enjoy you know your doom bulls and your. Oh, side note: Why do dragon ogres have stomp too? Just like <laughs> so much better than every, everything else in that kind of role. When a stonehorn has stomp nothing. <laughs> what? Yep. Kind really? Of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of that seems strange. Like they'd they'd be the quintessential stompy, right? Well it's got impact hits, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does impact yeah. D6 plus one. Yeah. Which That's is bizarre. Pretty good as well. <laughs> 
how the how the modeling opportunities for beasties though like they're a pretty niche unless you go some kind of wacky There's different a... kind of beast thing they're they're, niche. they're pretty good they're pretty good for the 3d prints i understand just because um yeah. they, again they were really popular in aos um and yeah there's just a lot available and because you know they're they're generic kind of beasts and monsters mm. and things like that right yeah i think i'd want to look beyond the games workshop range the mm. the gore and ungore models were quite good when they came out but i think they're they've been overtaken by other things a bit and yeah, yeah so uh for the monsters and things as well i i'd need to look far and wide but there's so many cool options for different gribbly things that could fit the bill uh, you could end up with a really cool mishmash of lots of different ranges, but it would kind of suit the list, which is meant to be a bit of a hodgepodge of denizens of the forest. Yeah. All right. So that's all of them. What? Are, what are so beasties are up there, warriors are up there, but you know maybe a bit too a bit too done. Um, what else are you thinking? So dark elves and scave, scave you're a little bit interested in demons lizard maybe i think that there are some really cool things for me that came out of that conversation that i'd like to have a play around with list writing for the, the high off chariots would be one the the skaven i definitely overlooked a bunch of things for and uh yeah beastman i just did not give as much credit to as i think i needed to uh and yeah for terror geists does sound like <laughs> exactly the sort of thing that uh appeals to me so yeah those are probably the i guess the highlights from the discussion uh but that's from a list perspective as well modeling wise it's it's still really hard to go past warriors and i think the vampire counts options are going to be really good too uh yeah time to start googling alternate ranges for beastmen i guess that's uh got, got to be one that's right up the top of the list yeah i reckon you kind of got to be clear what you actually want to do with this. Like, are you wanting to win tournaments or are you wanting to show people that something that everyone thought was crap can be okay. And you're not, not necessarily, you know, got a high probability of winning, but take your Skaven. And if you start getting some games in with that, like it starts being impressive, do the same with warriors or beasts. And, you know, maybe not as, as much so with dark elves. Yeah. Same sort of thing again. I think I'd like something that is that that is more unusual and not having expectations of doing as well. Yeah. But at the same time, quite a few of the lists with the low win rates are also ones that aren't play styles that I'm particularly attracted to. Uh, Dark Elves <laughs> definitely be an exception. But uh, yes, so then the other option might be take a, a an army book that's quite powerful and well known, but find an angle to it that other people aren't really using. Uh, I don't know, Marauder Spam Warriors of Chaos or, yeah, the, some, some, the Terror Geist list or something that is powerful and from a good book but is not the usual way to play it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Well, th thank you all very much for your help. I, I found that a really, a really helpful conversation to identify things that I just totally overlooked when I was having an initial sort of think about what armies to to try next and hopefully for people out there in uh, dwellersville uh some i don't know useful ideas for what the strengths and weaknesses of different options are if you're looking at choosing a new army yourself yeah but uh yeah Th so thanks very much everyone for joining us thank you jabe dave and Lockie as well for some invaluable insight and i guess as always don't fail your strength test Mm-hmm.